If you would ask me, how was your day? I could tell you, well, I had a good day, or well, I had a good day. In each case, you would interpret what I'm saying very differently, because you would interpret how I feel very differently. So being able to perceive the emotional state of the person you're interacting with is crucial for communication. But some contexts might make it more challenging. For instance, when you communicate with someone from another culture, or when the conversation happens in a foreign language. And what about when you're talking with someone on the phone? Can you still perceive how they are feeling? This is what I'm investigating. I have collected data via an online survey embedded with short audio or video clips of a Chinese speaker. My participants come from different cultures and speak different languages. Some of them are native, Chinese or, or native speakers of Chinese, some of them are learners of Chinese, and some of them do not understand any Chinese at all. And yet, after seeing or hearing each clip, all participants had to indicate how pleasant or unpleasant the Chinese speaker was feeling and how emotionally agitated or calm he was feeling. Next, they chose a specific word that describes how he was feeling. Happy, embarrassed, bored, etc. This distinction between specific emotions and the general feelings of pleasantness and agitation is also very interesting on the theoretical level. Some scholars believe that specific emotions like happiness or anger are universal. They are experienced and expressed similarly across the world. While other scholars believe that emotions are highly cultural specific and that only the general feelings of pleasantness and agitation might be universal. My results show that overall, people tend to perceive, to have similar perceptions of how pleasant <coughs> and how agitated a Chinese speaker is feeling, regardless of their own culture and of their own knowledge of Chinese. On the other hand, there seem to be more variation across languages and cultures in how spe people perceive specific emotions. Now, my findings have, have important implications for various domains in which, cross, in which intercultural communication uh, is critical. For instance, in business or in conflict resolution. So, in the language classroom, it is crucial that these emotional similarities and differences across languages and cultures start to get much more attention. Thank you.